what's happening youtube welcome back to another video today i'm going to break down how i made this soul sample and basically how to make like um 80s kind of soul samples from scratch so i'm just going to break down all the layers i did including like bass piano drums and everything and then show you guys how you can use that to flip your own sample into like a trap beat you know what I'm saying? So, and if this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing. I drop videos every day. And also make sure to go follow me on social media at Enviral. Tap in with me, but let's get it. All right, so I'll just show you guys the pattern one by one. So I started with this piano from Omnisphere. Those chords are kind of like dreamy, you know, almost like romantic chords. With that, I was trying to go for like a Quincy Jones, like James Ingram, like vibes, you know, type beat. But if you don't know who Quincy Jones or James Ingram are, like, bro, you're actually tripping. Like, you should definitely go listen to, like, go listen to 100 Ways by Quincy Jones and James Ingram. Like, that's some gas. But, like, it's some gas. Like, so that was kind of what the feeling I was going for. So for that, I used, like, a road sound. And pretty much any roads you use, if you play, like, some romantic chords, it's going to sound out of the 80s you know straight up that, that's when the sound got popular you know what i'm saying like compliment what she does her favorite song you know what i'm saying i'd be hitting y'all with the vocals man so the piano part is actually pretty simple the chords are pretty simple but like i added a lot of color notes to just spice up the chord progression and if you're having trouble with your chord progressions like to make them more colorful and interesting i actually dropped a video on how to make better chords i'll link it right now you should go check it out pretty much the chord progression is c9 and then E E7 and then A minor 7 and then F major 7 and then D sus 4 So you know what I'm saying that that kind of melody so you know what I'm saying? Like I didn't only just play chords, I played a melody with the chords and that's what makes it interesting because a lot of 80s songs do have a chord progression that follows a melody. It's not just like straight up just chords like. All right, so next thing that I put in there was this um, prophet lead. And like that soloed. You know what I'm saying? Just like a simple kind of like pluck sign lead uh, just to layer the piano. All right, so the next important, all right, so the next, I would say most important part that I put in is the bass line because it's like really groovy and definitely adds that 80s feel to it. And it basically just follows the chords except I did a lot of like, you know, walking around just to kind of lead up to it. saying like make it really groovy make it walk around and by the way if you guys want a separate tutorial on how to write like funky bass lines or just like cool bass lines that are not boring let me know in the comments you know if a lot of people want that kind of video i'll definitely drop one but uh next up i put the drum part which is which is the last thing that i added to the sample but it's really important because like you know what i'm saying you got to have that kind of like subtle drums in the background to kind of make it definitely sound like a sample otherwise it's not like legit you know what i'm saying you know the drums don't sound super realistic but it like it doesn't matter because i made it like drowned out in the effects i'll show you guys in a sec so in 80 songs a lot of times they do this kind of pattern where it's like so alternate between like a rim and a snare so this is what the drums sound like And then I have like a drum fill over here. 
know what I'm saying? Like, I don't play the drums, but I kind of know how most drum parts go, so I just tried my best. And I put, like, a lot of ambient reverb to kind of make it more in the background, and this is what it sounds like after. You know, make it a little bit more bright. And I also turned it way down. Because, you know, when you're flipping an actual sample, you know, you have to worry about taking EQing the drum parts out. But since I'm creating my own, you might as well turn that shit down so you don't have to worry about it. So so after a lot of, like, effects and stuff, this is my final sample, pretty much. saying it's already pretty groovy pretty funky so what i did is i duplicated the pattern and uh, raised everything up an octave so i did that just because like when i flip the sample i'm uh, gonna lower the pitch and i thought about putting like half time on it and stuff so all right, so let me show you guys now how I flipped the sample. So what I did is basically I rendered it out and then I pitched it up uh, like, what is it, 300 cents. So that's uh, three semitones. And this is what it sounds like. So next I applied all these effects on it like halftime and like EQ'd out some of the low end and the halftime setting is actually on eighth so it chops it up pretty fast. So next I took that and I actually made it twice as slow. So it, this is what it sounds like after I dragged it up like that. So like it's super slow. So what I did to uh, kind of make it still fast is I, so I went in over here, said chop, young chop, and did time based and said chop and bars. So it basically chopped it like this. So that's what I started with. And then I basically took it and uh, chopped it up. So it could still follow the same like time sequence. So as you can see over here, each chord is like only a bar long. T, four, one, two, three, four. But over here in the next section, I actually made each chord uh, two bars long because this is the original like slowed down version. So this is what it sounds like. 